Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple bandeau style strip binder. I'm Sky Kubakub, the creator of Rebirth Garments, a clothing line for queer and trans disabled folks of all sizes and ages. The biggest inspiration for my clothing line was actually the desire and need for a chest binder when I was in high school. I didn't have access to it as a person who was under 18. Additionally, the chest binders that were available at the time were only in like black or white or this really like racist kind of beige that they called nude. And so I just really wanted something that expressed my style and was really fun uh, and also just like celebratory of my identities. Materials you'll need for this tutorial are spandex, paper, pattern weights, but soup cans also work. Scissors, I like to have fabric scissors and paper scissors. Binder clips or pins. Uh, a sewing machine that has a zigzag stitch or you could use a serger. Uh, you need some sort of marking tool, a ruler, uh, a measuring tape, or you could use non-stretch string and a ruler to figure it out, or even a phone charger, uh, and a calculator. The compression material that I use for all of my gender affirming compression garments like chest binders and tucking undies is called Power Net. Uh, it is different than the normal stretch mesh and sometimes uh, normal stretch mesh is marketed as Power Net and it is not. Um, so Power Net has no latex in it so it's not allergic and there are these tiny little pieces of rubber that you can kind of see that go straight up and down and then they are woven and covered with fabric to make it soft. I make a lot of chest binders where it's just this material and it makes it slightly sheer because I wanted some more breathable binders and I liked kind of the sexiness of it but it is up to you and your comfort level. Here is another piece of white power net. And I get this from Spandex House. Uh, it is online. Uh, Spandex World is where I used to get everything, but they changed the kind of weight of the fabric. So I like a medium weight. Uh, it's a lot more um, comfy. The heavy weight is a little bit too um, rough for my skin. And then there is a lightweight and that is um, okay, but it might not be good for people who want a tight bind. This is just stretch mesh, so it stretches a lot more and that is not what we want, although some people still use it. And then we will have spandex, just any kind of spandex, which is also a non-latex material and it is stretchy and that will be for the trims and for a layer on top, uh, although the layer on top is optional if you want it to be sheer and breathable. You'll need a couple of measurements to start off. So uh, don't wear a chest binder or like a padded bra or anything, just wear something that uh, is thin. I'm going to be saying what my measurements are just as examples uh, and so that I can show you all the type of math that I use to do calculations, but definitely take your own measurements and uh, your measurements will probably be different than mine. All sizes are amazing and beautiful. And don't be worried if your measurements aren't like my measurements. I am also a person with uh, already a pretty small cup size. So um, chest binding is, is different for people of different sizes. I will show you how to adjust the pattern based on kind of the type of fit that you want, but also there will probably be some trial and error for you and you'll want to make like a mock-up and then you can make your real one, uh, which is is normally done in fashion. Uh, lots of times people will make a practice one or what they call muslin and that's totally fine. It's, if you don't make the perfect chest binder right away, like that's totally fine. Nobody does that. So um, yeah, get enough fabric where you can kind of make a couple in case. 
I'm going to measure my under bust and my bust measurement. And then for the strip binder, it's useful to get kind of in line of where your armpit uh, starts, uh, just like at the top of your uh, breast tissue uh, over the apex to the under bust, just so you know uh, like what the minimum amount of coverage that you need. When pattern making for stretch materials like spandex that you want to have skin tight to the body, any of the measurements that go across the body, like horizontally, you want to generally reduce by 20%. So uh, that we will take my under bust, which is 30 inches. And to reduce anything by 20%, you will take the measurement 30 and go times 0.8 because we just want to know what 80% of 30 is. And you can do this with centimeters or with inches, it doesn't matter. So yeah, if you're reducing 30 inches by 20% or also known as 80% of 30 inches is 24. So we'll take the 30 times 0.8 equals 24. It's good to know the bust measurement uh, just for reference, uh, but the under bust measurement is really what you are mostly trying to focus on for the chest binder because you want it to be skin tight to the under bust. You're trying to make your bust around the same size as your under bust. You don't reduce the measurements that are vertical in your body, like the neck to under bust, because uh, your body doesn't usually stretch more that way. I mean, I guess when you're growing, sure, but you want to have most of the stretch of any fabric going across your body and you want it to be, uh, yeah, just as tight as possible, um, but you don't want it to be going too short because <laughs> as you walk then everything will just ride up. If your under bust measurement is more than 35 inches then you probably might want to reduce uh, the measurement even more but I would start out at this baseline of reducing by 20% and make your muslin and if it's too loose then you can go tighter but I wouldn't go tighter right away. Uh, ad additionally, if your under bust is less than like 28 inches, then you may or may not want to make the pattern slightly bigger, uh, depending on your shoulder flexibility. And I do know that some folks have, um, under bust measurements of less than 20. And in that case, you might want to actually have some sort of, uh, closure, like, hook and eyes. If you want different fits of binders, uh, like if you want a less tight bind, I will add maybe 0.5 to an inch more. Or if you want a super tight bind, I might reduce by 0.5 or an inch. Uh, but it just depends on the fit that you want. And again, I would start out just with the baseline of reducing by 20% um, and then adjusting for your size and fit preference from there. The simple strip binder is basically just one big rectangle with two little rectangle trims. I am going to use a zine, you can use a book or anything in order to create the square so you know that uh, your measurements are coming off of a 90 degree angle. So I'm just gonna draw this against this this, which I know is a straight line. And then I'm going to take my, my calculation of the 24 inches, and I am going to just draw this straight out 24 inches. I know this ruler is only 18 inches, so I have to add six inches um, to this. And I'll use my zine again in order to make it square. For me, my breast tissue is six inches 
uh, from the top to the bottom. So I will just put a little mark where the six inches is there. Uh, and then I'll make another mark somewhere in the middle at the six inches and one at the side. And you can make this on any kind of paper. Lots of people use newspaper. I'm just showing it to you on this uh, manila paper so that you can see it better. Uh, I usually use brown, like just brown paper, um, but it's hard to see the marks. So yeah, here is your strip binder. For me, I don't like to have the trims too, too tight because with my sensory problems, uh, one of the main reasons why I started the clothing line was because I wanted things that didn't have such tight waistbands or trims because uh, otherwise they felt too squeezy uh, and would hurt. So for y'all, you can take the measurement of whatever your calculation is uh, so for me, it was 24 inches. I'm going to write that down. And I'm going to just subtract one inch for me for my trims. So my trims are actually going to be 23. And then I cut out uh, a, the, the thickness as two, but you can, you can make it wider if you want a wider trim. So for if I cut out a two inch thing and then I have a quarter inch seam allowance, then this ends up being a trim that is three quarters of an inch. So it's just up to you if you want it to be wider than that. Um, I wouldn't go uh, less than that because then the trim starts to get really tiny and um, difficult to deal with. Um, I think maybe for this one we'll do 2.5 because uh, we're going to be using a zigzag machine. So you always just want to be conscious of how big your seam allowance is going to be. So on the zigzag machine, I think my seam allowance will be half an inch, but for the serger, I use a quarter inch seam allowance. So I usually just mark what the trim is there on the edge of my binder so I can keep track, um, but we'll also draw it out uh, and cut it so yeah, well, so it'll just be one inch less. So I'm just going to actually take this ruler and mark one inch less. Uh, and then I will take my zine to draw my straight edge and I will mark two and a half inches and two and a half. And you want to put weights down if you can. You can use books or your cell phone or cans of soup. Um, but I have real pattern weights, but you don't need them. This will be your trim. You will want to cut two of these and you want to mark that. Everybody's bodies fluctuate a lot. Uh, and especially if you, at some point you go on T or something like that, that might also change your body. So I'm putting my name, date, what this project is. And this is this piece is the trim, trims, and this piece is the like main <laughs> binder. <laughs> Sometimes you write like front or back. This just goes all the way around. Write down what kind of fabric you're going to use. So I'm going to cut two trims because we have a trim for the top and the bottom. And sometimes people like to have a less tight trim on the top or uh, and a tighter one on the bottom or vice versa. It just depends on your body. I like it to be pretty evenly not tight. And always when you put it together, if the trim seems like it'll be too long, you can just cut off like half an inch by half an inch to make it shorter. So I'm gonna cut two spandex. And for this one, you're going to cut one piece in spandex and cut one piece in power net. I like to mark down what the measurements are of the person that I'm making the garment for because later on, if somebody has similar measurements, then 
I can either use that pattern or just take it and change it slightly. Now you can cut it out. When you're cutting patterns, it is useful to still use a pattern weight. I'm going to go back and mark the grain lines of my pattern pieces. The grain line is basically kind of what will be parallel to the selvage edge. So um, yeah, the, if the selvage edge was here on the fabric, then you want this lined up here rather than this way. Um, it, for some fabrics, like some stretch, like super stretchy mesh, and for some velours, the grain lines are actually the opposite, like, or like the, the stretch is the opposite of the selvage. So that makes it a little confusing. You can also think of the grain lines as like, if you were to take the grain line and you wanted to stretch it, like that's where you want it to be. You want it stretched from the grain line, like stretching it this way. So yeah, we have the grain lines for that. Um, but yeah, for the, for the power net, it's, uh, actually a slightly less stretchy, uh, going this way, but it's okay. Cause it's supposed to be compressing. So yeah, just line it up with the selvage. I am cutting from just a scrap that I had. So, uh, just pretend that there's a selvage edge and yeah, make it go across. It is a little bit different in the stretch. Um, so if you look at the power net itself, the little rubbers are going uh, this way, like with the selvage edge. The seam allowance is already included in this, um, just from your calculations. Usually uh, you would add more seam allowance, but since this is a compression garment, you're actually just going to um, just sew it as is. And the trims that we have the pattern for um, that is two and a half inches wide will also help with making your binder as long as it still needs to be, which is the six inches for me. So I'm going to just draw some chalk on here. You can use a pen or a pencil, or you can just cut as you go. That's what I usually do. <laughs> um, although I guess if you're a beginner, maybe not. Now you have your piece of power net and yeah, eventually it'll be sewn here. And then this will be your, your, your chest binder lining. Uh, and this is what is compressing your chest. So now you cut out another piece of this size in spandex. You want the stretch for all of the spandex parts to be stretchier going around your body rather than up and down, because if it is stretchier going up and down your body, then at some point it'll get kind of like saggy. And you don't want that. This is stretchier going this, this way. When you're working with fabrics that have a pattern on it, you can kind of decide where you want the pattern. I think I want it to be half stripes up and down and half stripes going across and try to save your fabric and not just cut all the way in the middle of it. Don't uh, put the selvage edge into like where your pattern is because this is kind of like different, like a tighter weird weave. So it'll kind of mess things up. For cutting the spandex portion, I am actually going to show you a different way to cut, um, but you can go ahead and do it the same uh, with the scissors uh, if you want. So this is the way that I do it though. Um, I will take a ruler if it's at a straight edge and put it in, right next to the pattern and I will take a rotary cutter and be careful not to stab yourself with the rotary cutter, but I will just go against right next to the pattern. Uh, for me, this makes it a lot easier to cut spandex. The first thing that I made that was like super color blocked, I cut out with scissors and it was like a bunch of triangles. And then it ended up being really goofy because uh, I cut out the triangles, like also not laying down on a table or anything. So you wanna make sure you kind of straighten out your fabric and don't have it all like bunched up when you, when you cut it. <laughs>
And also you can work at a table if you want. Most people I know work at tables that are like standing height. Um, but for me, I am Asian. I grew up in a household with almost no chairs and no tables. So I prefer working on the ground, but it's also not necessarily accessible for everybody to do that. So yeah, now you have the fabric for uh, the outside of your binder and you can just have these stacked on top of each other. There's usually a selvage here and we'll just line it up here. You don't want it to be, you, you can kind of see the lines of the spandex, like, um, yeah, you can kind of see the grain line uh, going up and down. And yeah, you just want to line it up with that. You don't want it to be crooked because then when you sew it down and fold it over, it can get twisty looking. Put these weights on top and yeah, you can draw or you can just rotary cutter and you don't need extra seam allowance because it's already included. The trims are usually the trickiest for my newer employees to cut out. I'm just going to do it with the rotary cutter because that's what I prefer, but you can cut it out um, with scissors. You just have to do it carefully and make sure you aren't making it too wibbly. And I always use my foot and my other hand to anchor the ruler because if you just try to do it with one hand, um, or just like one thing holding down the ruler, then it will always slide. You should have your fabric um, pretty flat and not wrinkly. I'm just using scraps, so it's pretty wrinkly, but it's okay because I am a professional. <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. But yeah, if you basically just like flatten it under the pattern and put the weights on it, uh, it'll be fine. Now you have your second trim. This is kind of what the chest binder will look like. Um, and yeah, so I just lay it out so that it's all ready to be sewn. I actually lots of times don't even pin these parts, but we're going to do it for the sake of showing you. So just put one binder clip in the middle of that. Try to keep the edges even because if you start it out like this where it's like off, it'll um, kind of put a little skew into everything you do. <laughs> and if you're a person who doesn't like seams on the, on the inside, if it feels uncomfortable to you, you can always just do everything um, kind of inside out from the way that I'm saying to make it so that the seams are on the outside. Um, that's more of a thing that it, it looks a little bit better when it's with a serger because a serger is pretty like finished looking, but if it's for comfort, then you should just do it. So we're going to start out by sewing all of the edges. Um, I'm going to just line this, uh, edge of my fabric up with the edge of the foot of the machine. These are the same kinds of machines that are at a lot of libraries and schools. So that's why I'm showing you on this, but I also have the serger tutorial, which is what I prefer. <laughs> so just start sewing and remember to do your back stitch. I just go on to the next thing without even cutting them apart. Remember to do your back stitch again. And now the main part. This is sewing through four layers, so it will be harder than the trims. Um, so just keep that in mind. And you can put your needle down in it and get it all situated. I just try to line, keep on looking at it being lined up. I don't try to like think about where the needle is going because that um, kind of messes up your brain. Okay, so now we have our pieces. So when I'm making a lot of chest binders, I'll just make a ton of these uh, and get ready. 
and then just snip them apart, cut off the extra little tails. You can use snips instead of full scissors. Now you turn this right side out and you turn both of your trims right side out. And I'm using an orange, um, just orange thread, just so you can kind of see what's happening. But like, you can use something that blends in, or something that stands out. It's up to you. So now I will take this seam allowance, and I'm going to line it up with this seam allowance. So you want the seam allowances to be going in different directions, and you can also be reminded of this in other tutorials. And I'm just going to put a binder clip here. I tend to use binder clips rather than pins because I'm less likely to um, make them fly into my eyeballs if they break. And yeah, so then you kind of pull it to the other side and try to yeah pull the trim and the binder itself kind of evenly. So you know where the center is on the other side and you're going to pinch that and then you're going to line all of these up a binder clip here and then you're going to pull this straight and kind of walk your fingers to the center and keep grab all of these layers and line them up and put a binder clip there and then you're going to do it on the other side and yeah this is just to make sure that the trim is the like evenly displaced because if you just kind of try to sew in the trim without pinning it down then there will be parts that are really loose and parts that are weird and tight and bunchy so you want to just try to um, make sure everything's even. And now you can see that it looks all pretty even on both sides. It's not like, uh, sometimes if it's not, then one side will be, um, pulling and it'll like be kind of like, it'll look kind of like this or something, which in that case, sometimes you just pull it to fit it. But in this case, you don't want them to be tight. So yeah, I'm gonna do it like this, and then you'll just do it on the other side too. So yeah, just keep on trying to line up all of your little pieces, your four pieces of fabric that are, um, like just keep on trying to line it up so you can see them all going uh, under the machine at the same time. It's less of a big deal with the zigzag, I think, than the serger. And I'm starting like a little bit before the seam and just take away your binder clip whenever you need. For this one, you don't even have to pull while you're sewing at all. Like it all should just kind of line up pretty nicely. And sew over the part that you already sewed and then backstitch. And make sure your needle's out and you can pull this out. And just trim all of your little extra pieces of thread because otherwise they'll be annoying. <laughs> um, but for now, here we can see how well that worked out. Here now we have our beautiful trim. And yeah, this is kind of what it looks like on the inside. And you'll just do the exact same thing for the other side. When you do the second uh, trim, you just want to make sure that your seam allowance is laying in the same way. Because if you do one this way and one that way, then you'll have a weird twisty thing. So just lay it like this and turn it back uh, right side out just to see. And then you're going to have the seam allowance for this one going that way now to make it line up and yeah now you just repeat the same thing that I did on the other side you can also always take 
this type of binder and sew existing bra straps onto it if you want it to have straps and you want an easy hack. If you want to make a chest binder of a different kind of shape, like sports bra, race rack, tank top style, you can take some of your existing clothing in shapes that you like and learn how to pattern make them from past radical videos on how to pattern make from existing clothing. And then you'll just basically make one lining of the compression material called power net and that will make it so that it'll compress uh, your chest. If you want to see more complex uh, binder tutorials later, let your librarians know. Here is my finished strip binder and yeah, I feel good in it. It feels compressy but not too tight. Remember again, if it is too painful to wear or to put on, do not put it on. It should not take you 20 minutes to put on a chest binder, which I've heard many people say. It should take you less than a minute. <laughs> if you want it to be looser or tighter, make your mock-up and then adjust it to whatever your taste is. Check out the rest of the Radical Fit playlist on the U Media Chicago YouTube channel. We would love to see the projects you are working on, so use the hashtags CPL Radical Fit, U Media, and U Media Chicago, and tag us on Instagram and Twitter at U Media Chicago. Or find us on our Facebook, U Media at Chicago Public Library.